Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spurs Up Show, the best Gamecocks podcast on the internet. Today is Tuesday, February the 9th, 2021. On today's show, it is officially game day. Gamecocks taking on the 11th ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. Can South Carolina, boy, oh boy, it's Jekyll or is it Hyde? Can they find a way to bounce back tonight? against the Crimson Tide. I'll go into top storylines, Alabama players to watch for, keys the game, give my prediction, much more from there as well. Also, as we sit just 10 days away from opening day, guys, we continue along with the season preview series for Gamecocks baseball today. I'm talking South Carolina's catchers heading in the 2021 baseball season. We'll talk key losses, who's back, most approved, best overall, season will be successful if I'll give my overall grade much more from there as well. we got a lot to get into here on a Tuesday, folks, and it's all brought to you by our friends over at Upstate Movers Group. Guys, Upstate Movers Group, superior moving service. They bring care and attention other companies can't offer because they're just too busy maintaining trucks and profiting off of them instead of focusing on service. Guys, service is what separates Upstate Movers Group from the competition. They're not a trucking company, by the way. They are a moving services company, and they're also employee-owned co-op. They're Movers are paid twice the industry average, and everyone on the crew is invested in your success, guys. They have dedicated professional crew members, and they also offer black glove service. They offer end-to-end packing services, custom crating and packaging for special items, and cleaning services as well. They are founded by Greenville Natives and University of South Carolina alumni, guys, so a Gamecock-owned small business. They also offer 20 years of project management and moving experience, and they can offer logistics and solutions that traditional moving companies simply do not have the skills for. Guys, whether you're in the upstate or across the state of South Carolina. If you have any moving needs in 2021, be sure to check out our friends over at Upstate Movers Group. You can find them on social media at Upstate Movers Group. And of course, if you have any questions for them, check out their website, upstatemoversgroup.com. That's upstatemoversgroup.com. Be sure to check them out and tell them Chris from the Spurs Up Show sent you. Let's get it. Does anybody want breakfast? Guys, let's go. I'm leaving for McDonald's in five seconds. Why do you start with that? The Breakfast Stampede Meal. It's only at McDonald's, where there's a meal for every morning. Enjoy our value favorites, like a sausage drink muffin with egg, just two for $4. And get an any size McCafe premium roast coffee for just a buck. Price and participation may vary. Single item at regular price cannot be combined with combo meal. But up, 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 up. Start the new year right during the Xfinity Hello 2021 sales event. For a limited time, get Xfinity Internet and Mobile together for only $35 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement and mobile with our one-gig wireless data option. Plus, get $250 back. This sale ends soon, so visit Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Internet offer requires paperless billing and auto pay. Ends 11 Restrictions apply. New performance starter plus internet customers only. Equipment taxes, regulatory recovery, and other fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. All right, what is up, guys? Happy Tuesday. Hope you're all doing well. I'm Chris Phillips, host the Spurs Up show as always. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Happy game day to you all. Also, Gamecocks basketball taking on the 11th ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. We'll dive into that much, much more, guys. Hope again you're all doing well as we sit here on a Tuesday. Uh, I've had a good week so far. we got great weather in the city. Just a couple of days until I head out of town yet again, as I've told you guys before, going back to Orlando with the family. Very excited. And one last weekend vacation before we dive into baseball, and I'm basically locked into the baseball field for the next three and a half months. You know, Founders Park, whatever other park is going to be my home for the next three and a half, four months. So I figured why not one more trip? But again, Really do appreciate you guys tuning in here on a Tuesday. And without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into it. South Carolina hosting the 11th ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. They come into Columbia, South Carolina, Colonial Life Arena, a 630 tip on the SEC network. Alabama right now opening up as an eight and a half point favorite in this one. The over under set at a 154 and a half. So again, Bama eight and a half point favorite over under set at 154 and a half. The 11th ranked Crimson Tide. Boy, who, who would have thought we'd be saying that, by the way? The 11th ranked 
Crimson Tide in basketball. It, it makes no sense this year. This year, as we all know, has been complete madness. Alabama sits right now 15-5 and five overall, 10-1 and one in the SEC. Just suffered their first loss of the season, by the way, in conference on Saturday to the Missouri Tigers in a really close game. I think it was like a three-point loss, but they were 10-0. and 0 going into Saturday, lost to Missouri. Their head coach, Nate Oates. And again, Alabama has been the story, or at least one of the stories, of college basketball this year, led by their head coach, Nate Oates. They're averaging 79 points per game, holding their opponents to 69 points per game. So again, a really, really good offensive club, and they also play really good defense. They do it all. They shoot 43% from the field, 35% from three, and they hold their opponents to 40% from the field and 29% from three-point range. So again, very solid offensively, good defensively. And let's move into top storylines. And for me, again, the lead one is this. When you look at South Carolina, what gives? Because we make the joke of, oh, you know, well, South Carolina lost Saturday to Mississippi State. So, I mean, they're, they're definitely going to win tonight, right? I mean, you know, that it's just the Jekyll and Hyde thing. And South Carolina goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You know, that's all fine and Danny to say that. And, and, and we, can, we can live in that fairy tale, if you will, I guess. But the fact of the matter is this, the 11th ranked Alabama Crimson Tide are coming into your house tonight. If you don't show up and put together a better effort than we've seen in games such as Mississippi State, Vanderbilt, Missouri, who dang Alabama just lost to, if we see that type of performance, this thing could get really, really ugly really, really early. On the flip side, if we see the team that showed up against Florida, against Georgia, against A&M, you never know. Still no guarantee you'll win because Alabama's probably definitely the best team you've played all season. But again, what gives, like, which team do we see? Again, I, guys, I, I told you after the Florida game, at this point, I just don't have any clue. I don't have any clue with this basketball team. I don't know what to think. I truly don't know what to think. Like, which team will show up? Is it a good night for South Carolina or is it a bad night? And again, it's funny to joke about because we say, oh, is it Jekyll or is it Hyde? That's, you know, that's a fun way to phrase it, right, when a team's inconsistent. But this team, I mean, truly, is it Jekyll or is it Hyde? Game to game to game to game. It's a different basketball team every time out. Which one do you get this time? Again, you better get the good version. You better get the good version because if you don't, you'll get run out of the gym. So, I mean, what gives for this South Carolina team? Again, you... You haven't had a ton of instances this year where you've had you've had back to back just miserable outings. You know, it's, again, it's been very inconsistently consistent. I mean, consistently inconsistent. However, you want to phrase it, whatever. You know, that's the only consistency about this team is their inconsistency. So, what gives? Like, which team shows up for South Carolina? Another big storyline for me, and unfortunately, I think it's a negative for South Carolina. Um, Alabama, of course, losing their first SEC game of the season on Saturday. And I said it right when it happened. I said it as the second that I saw the final result from Saturday. Damn it. That is not good for the Gamecocks. Because, again, you know, you feel like, again, a team like Alabama that came in that game Saturday 10-0, they lose. You know the Crimson Tide are going to be looking to bounce back. You know they're going to be fired up and focused and locked in versus where I think if they won, I mean, sure, they'd still be focused and locked in. I'm not saying that, but it's a different vibe now. You know, Bama, I think, is probably going to be coming out with, with vengeance on their mind. They want to show who they really are and show that they really are this, you know, worthy of their 11th, you know, number 11 in the country ranking, right? So the Bama bounce back. Unfortunately, I think South Carolina drew the short, the short straw. I would have much rather South Carolina been playing an undefeated Crimson Tide team. You know, maybe Alabama comes in, oh, you know, it's a little South Carolina. We're not thinking much of them, whatever. You know, we're undefeated. We're big, bad Bama this year. You know, we're the story of college basketball. We're not worried about South Carolina. But now, no, no, no. You, you have Bama's full attention. I, I can promise you, you have got Alabama's full attention. And you're going to get their best shot. Because the last thing the Crimson Tide want to do is lose back-to-back -back games. So, the Bama bounce back to me. Really big storyline in this one. Hey, another top storyline for me back to the South Carolina side of things. <laughs> pretty simple. Is it a hot or a cold shooting night? Again, which team shows up? I think we'll probably know pretty early on. Is it a hot or cold shooting night? Can you make a shot or can you not? Again, it's it's so tough. You know, I'll just tell you, just kind of a side note really quickly. It's almost tough at this point to come up with storylines, to come up with keys to the game. Because this team, it's... 
it's so inconsistent. The storylines and the keys, they all, they change game to game in the sense that like, okay, we know if we do this well, we'll have a really good shot to win. Does this team even know what it does well at this point? I mean, do, do any of us know? I, I don't really know. I know that if A.J. Lawson gets hot and has a good night scoring, that we're going to have a chance to win. Outside of that, I don't really know anything. So, just, again, like a little side note. Like, that's how I feel when I'm coming up. Okay, what are the storylines? I'm like, I don't even know. There's one storyline, and it's which team shows up. I mean, what is this South Carolina team? This South Carolina team makes no sense. It's frustrating. But, hey, is it a hot or cold shooting night? Because, again... Alabama scoring 79 points per game. And their numbers from the field, like their numbers from the field are honestly not as crazy as I expected. Again, 43 and 35. That's not like outrageous or anything. But again, holding their opponents to 40 and 29. That's pretty good defensively. So what kind of shooting night is it for South Carolina? And then finally for me, the style of game this is going to be. What type of game is this going to be? Because, again, Alabama, pretty solid defensively. When South Carolina's playing well, you know, we saw it against uh, against Florida. When South Carolina's playing well, they can turn it into a defensive game. I think that's probably the type of game they want to play. They don't want to play an offensive shootout. But you might have to. You simply might have to. Bama's a really good offensive team. We're about to talk about the players to watch for for them. The crazy thing with Bama is this. They don't really ha- just have one guy who's scoring like 25 points per game, and then there's this huge drop-off. These are their leading scores and their averages. 13.9, 13.1, 11.9, 11.2, 8.1, 7.8, 5.5, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, like, they've got a ton of dudes that can do it. they got a bunch of guys that can do it. So, I just wonder, like, what type of game is this? Is this an offensive shootout? Is this a game where South Carolina needs to score 90 points to win? Or is it a defensive, you know, get-in-your-face, tough Frank Martin style of basketball type of game like we saw against Florida? Is it a, is it a you know, 69-65 to 65 type of game? What's the style of the game? What's the pace of the game? What's the tempo? I'll be curious to see that. All right, let's move into Alabama players to watch for, guys. We're going to start... With the leading scorer for the Crimson Tide, Jaden Shackelford, 13.9 points per game. Really fantastic guard for them. Um, I mean, they've they've got a lot of really just solid players. This dude, 6'3", 200 out of California, actually. Sophomore guard, though. Um, He is their leader. He is their leader, no doubt. Had 15 points on Saturday against Mizzou. Um, His last couple games, 15, 19, 14, 21, has been playing really, really well in SEC play. And speaking of playing well in SEC play, This next guy I'm going to talk about, John Petty Jr., he is actually their leading scorer in SEC play. He's averaging, I think, like 14.1 points per game in SEC play. So, again, they've got two fantastic guards on the outside. Again, it makes sense because, as we all know, you know, all great basketball teams, especially in college, are run by their guard play. And this guy, 6'5", 184, but a senior out of Huntsville, Alabama, is John Petty Jr. And then a big guy down low. Herbert Jones, not even really down low, just a big guy in general. Um, a Ford, if you will, senior Ford, six foot eight, 210, kind of a same build as a Keyshawn Bryant. Um, he's been playing really well for them, though, and somebody certainly to watch for as a guy that can get down there with the big uglies and, and again, leads their team in rebounds, finds a way to rebound the basketball. Let's move into keys to the game, guys. And, and the, it, the first one is simple, but it, it's just a fact. The first one is just remove the lid. Uh, you got to take the lid off and score. I mean, you, you just have to. You got to make shots. I think that's one of the most frustrating things about watching this team is we all know it was a piss poor shooting day on Saturday. We all know that. And the fact of the matter is this it's not like Mississippi State was playing some outrageously great defense. You just were missing shots. Like you were open. You were flat out open. Am I wrong? You were open. You just didn't hit them. A guy like Jermaine Kuznar, he's getting looks. He's getting the same looks he got last year. The difference is last year he was hitting them. This year, I don't know what's going on. So, again, when you get an open look, you got to hit it. Remove the lid. My second key to the game, second chance points in this one, guys. When you're going for an upset, when you're going for a big upset, 
punishing the team you're playing for their mistakes, but also not giving them second chances. You know, I'll equate it to baseball, not giving a great team extra outs. You give a great team extra outs, they're going to make you pay more often than not. They are going to make you pay. You can't give Alabama second chance points. You got to win the defensive rebounds, find a way to eliminate those second chance points and get some of your own offensively under the glass. Get second chance points of your own and eliminate them for Alabama. And my final key to the game, Guys, you're not going to win this game if you don't win the turnover battle. I'm, You know, just no question. Protect the basketball. Simple, but something South Carolina has to do. Protect the basketball. I expect Frank Martin to have a good game plan put together. I expect a, a you know, relentless defensive type of effort, what you'd expect from a Frank Martin coach squad, but you got to protect the basketball. You, you just have to. Can't give it up. Can't give it, again, cannot give a team, a team like Alabama, will make you pay for mistakes. They are going to make you pay. You got to limit the mistakes. So again, my three keys to the game, remove the lid, second chance points, and protect the basketball. And that moves us into my prediction. South Carolina, can they upset the 11th ranked team in the country? You just beat a top, what, 20 team? Or excuse me, was Florida like 22nd, I think. You just beat a top 25 team, though, last week, nearly a week to the date. You just did it. Nobody was giving you a chance in that. I think it was, the line was very similar, eight, eight and a half, whatever. Can the Gamecocks do it again? This time at home. Alabama, like I said, a team that has been the, the top story of college basketball. I mean, they're, they're the talk of college basketball for what they've done. And, and the type of season they're having, what Nate Oates is doing, he's pushing all the right buttons for them. And you know what's funny, guys, is I told you all that, you know, if I pick South Carolina to win again, punch me in the face. And, you know, I'm going to pick South Carolina to lose every single time. Well, that jinx, I guess, ended on Saturday because I, I picked South Carolina to lose, and they lost. <laughs> so I actually hit the pick. First time in a while. I finally was right on a pick. Without beating around the bush, though, and giving you guys some dramatic entrance into my pick, though, I don't need a jinx. I, I don't need a, a superstition. I, I don't need any reason to pick Alabama to beat South Carolina other than Alabama is in a different universe of how much better of a basketball team they are than South Carolina. I mean, listen, I, I know the Gamecocks have been back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I just tell you guys this, though. Even if South Carolina plays, even if we see the good side of the Gamecocks, I mean, do you really think that's going to be enough? Do, do you? Because Bama's by far the best team you've played against. All due respect to the Gators, Alabama is the best team you have played, and it is not even close. Again, you get them at home. Sure, you have a great opportunity. 11th ranked team in the country. Damn near a top 10 team coming into town. But we're talking about a team that just lost by 16 to Mississippi State. A not very good Mississippi State team. And again, I know this team has played pretty damn well when it's been the underdog. It, it's Again, it's just been Jekyll and Hyde, Jekyll and Hyde. I wonder about the confidence this team will come in this game with. Again, I, I'm sure they'll be fired up. You have to be. It's a big-time matchup, big-time opportunity. But again, I, I, you know, I said I wasn't picking South Carolina to win again out of principle. Well, I, I don't need principle in this one. Bama's the better team. There's nothing about South Carolina. Again, there's nothing about this Gamecocks basketball team, even – even with the, you know, oh, well, Chris, you know, they might bounce back. They've done it. Guys, you can't bank on that. You, you just cannot bank on that. Bama's a better club. They're a better team. And, and, and you factor in that Bama lost on Saturday. You factor in that Alabama lost on Saturday. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way this Crimson Tide team loses two in a row. Again, if Bama would have won Saturday, I honestly would have gave you a much better chance. But Bama fresh off a loss? I think South Carolina drew the short straw in this one, guys. Again, I, I got the Crimson Tide winning this one 84-70. to 70. I, Again, there's just nothing that the Gamecocks have shown me that says this game should even be close. I, I mean, really. And I hate to say that. And, uh, you know, listen, this is one if you lose, you were supposed to lose. Bama's a damn good team. You're struggling. 
you're scuffling, you're inconsistent, you're just not very good this year, bottom line. You want to blame it on COVID? Sure, you can't, but you can't. You go ahead and do it. You're just not very good. You're just not very good this year. So, uh, you know, again, with that being said, like I said, if Alabama would have beat Missouri on Saturday and came in undefeated, you know, as crazy as it sounds, I would have given South Carolina a better chance. But with Bama coming fresh off a loss, I, I don't see any way – that they're overlooking the Gamecocks or taking South on a lightly. And I think that's the only way you'd beat them because I don't think you're a better team than them. So, again, I've got Alabama getting the win 84-70, to 70, a tough loss at home. But, again, I, I, this is not a game anybody's expecting you to win. This is not a game anybody's going to expect you to win. So, again, I got the Crimson Tide 84-70. to 70. Maybe my jinx will work yet again. Maybe South kind of comes out and gets the big upset. But right now I'm rolling with Alabama 84-70 to 70 in this ballgame. So, all right, let's move into baseball, guys. Like we said in the beginning, the season preview series for baseball rolls on. This is the last week of the position unit previews because, of course, next Friday, not this one, next Friday is opening day at Founders Park. Oh, my goodness, how sweet it is, folks. So we will do catchers today, outfielders on Thursday, And then either Monday or Tuesday, I'm not sure which day yet, we will have our full Gamecocks baseball season preview show breaking down uh, projected starting lineup, you know, season predictions, everything to do with the season. And then, of course, Thursday of next week, I will have a full series preview and we'll really dive into, you know, covering Gamecock baseball throughout the season. But again, we're wrapping up the position unit previews this week. We're going to start on this Tuesday with the Gamecocks catchers heading into 2021 baseball season in a really interesting position because you do lose a pair of bashers. And I know I've talked about these guys on a couple of other shows, especially uh, when I talked about first baseman because these guys both played first base. And that is Dallas Beaver and Bryant Bowen. And Beaver's really the one. Beaver's the one that caught for you last year. Again, hit 256, um, didn't hit a homer, had four RBIs though, but a guy that you felt like could have been a big power bat, especially in the SEC. Uh, Bowen was a guy that helped you, but Beaver was the mainstay back there behind the plate. Now, who do you return? Colin Burgess. And this is a kid that played a lot, you know, played really well, hit 308, hit 308, uh, had two RBI, but I mean, again, only only played in uh, nine games at 26 ABs, but was solid for you as a true freshman too. Did a really, really good job, I thought, as a true freshman. And I thought, honestly, even last year was the Gamecocks' best option defensively. You know why Beaver was in the lineup? It was for his stick, bottom line. I think Burgess even last year was the best option defensively. And it's funny, you wouldn't look at Colin Burgess and think, oh my God, great defensive catcher, because he's like five foot eight, little Burgie, little Burgie. He's like five foot eight, but the dude finds a way to get the job done, has a solid arm. Again, the other guys that are back, Wes Clark, he can catch. You got a couple of newcomers. Unfortunately, Alex Boychuk, who I think may have been your starting catcher. He was healthy, but he is hurt and out for the season. Connor Sino, the other one from Wando High School, a true freshman. Mark Kingston talked about him a bit. And then he even mentioned, Kingston even mentioned, in case of an emergency, which fingers crossed this does not happen, in case of an emergency, George Khalil, (laughs) George Khalil, the Gamecock shortstop, could catch for you again. Pray to God we don't see that this year, but it is an option. It is an option. So, again, this was a position that Mark Kingston talked about in his media availability. I'm going to get that more in just a second because, again, it kind of ties into my season will be successful if all that stuff. But let's move into most to prove. And this one, again, I'm going to throw out a name that fans are not familiar with. I know for a fact. But the biggest question mark for this position, guys, is just flat-out depth. Because, yes, you have Wes Clark, but you don't love him back there, to be honest. You, you don't love him. I mean, he's a fine option, but has, has a little bit of ways to come defensively. He's a hitter. Wes Clark is a hitter, bottom line. Wes Clark, and he can play a solid first base, don't get me wrong, but Wes Clark is in that lineup because he can swing the stick, bottom line. He's a hitter. Depth developing depth behind Colin Burgess because Colin Burgess will be your opening day catcher. No question. Developing depth, though. My most approved is Connor Sino, the freshman from Wando High School. Again, an unknown commodity. Has he really done anything in the scrimmages? I couldn't even hardly tell you. But you got to find somebody else 
to step up behind Colin Burgess. Colin Burgess can't catch 60 games, guys. You're going to have to put somebody else out there. And yes, again, Wes Clark, I think in the midweek and giving Colin Burgess a break, I think he can be serviceable, but you need to develop somebody else. And a guy like Connor Sino, Sino coming from Wando High School, who was impressive there, was really, really good for them. Hey, you're at South Carolina because you deserve to be, because you have the talent. Could a guy like that develop? Again, I think he has the most to prove because you got to find some other guys that can catch for you. You got to find some guys to help out Colin Burgess. And with that being said, the best overall, no question of this group, it is Colin Burgess. I, I'll tell you this. I like Burgess' game a lot. Um, by far, like I said, I think even last year as a true freshman was the best defensive catcher I saw in the scrimmages when he played in games. No doubt the best defensive catcher. And I think he's a sneaky good hitter, guys. Again, you know, only had 26 ABs, was hitting 308. So I don't want to overreact to the fact he was hitting 308 with only 26 ABs, but he's a sneaky good hitter. A guy who doesn't strike out a lot. A guy there's not a lot of swing and miss in his game. Again, he had, he had five strikeouts in 26 at-bats. Not a ton of swing and miss in his game, though. Normally, Colin Burge is going to give you a tough A-B. And again, he's probably a guy going to be hitting seven-hole, eight-hole, something like that. And that's all you can really ask for when you have those guys at the bottom of the lineup. And again, I, I think Burgess, and I, I don't want to like sound like I'm, I'm – you know, I don't want to insult Colin Burgess because I think the kid can swing it a little bit. Like, I, I think he can swing it. But if nothing else is going to give you tough ABs at the bottom of the lineup, and I think this is a guy actually that could be a real surprise in the lineup. I don't know that people are expecting much out of him. And again, we didn't get to see a lot of him because he was a true freshman and the season got cut short. But again, I love what he does behind the plate defensively. I, I think that's almost the number one reason why he's in the lineup. Um, from what I've heard, pitchers really like throwing to him. Presents a good target, which is kind of surprising because he's a smaller dude, right? But pitchers seem to like throwing to him. And uh, he's a tough out. He's a tough out for you, no question. I've seen him put together some really good at-bats, um, the scrimmages I've been to. And I think he's a solid option for South Carolina behind the plate. And I think he will be the option. He's going to be your starting catcher. Here's three great reasons to get the new Samsung Galaxy S21 5G at T-Mobile. One, it's free for both current and new customers when you trade in an eligible device. Two, T-Mobile's the leader in 5G coverage. So three, you can unleash 5G speeds in more places with your new phone. Get the new Galaxy S21 free at T-Mobile, the leader in 5G coverage. Phone via 24 monthly bill credits plus tax. If you cancel credit, stop and balance on required finance agreement may be due. Contact us. Qualifying credit and consumer plan required. See details at T-Mobile.com. Which leads me to this. Season will be successful if. What will deem a successful season for South Carolina's catchers? And, and really, it's one thing to me. One thing and one thing only. The season will be successful for South Carolina's catchers if Colin Burgess just stays healthy. I mean, just knock on wood, knock on wood, whatever you got to do, say a prayer, do a rain dance. I don't know. But if, you know, with all due respect to Wes Clark and, and Connor Cena, if Colin Burgess goes down, you are in, in some shit behind the play. You just, you know, that's the one thing that concerns me is, is the depth of your catchers, is your overall depth. Um, you know, you just don't have, you know, you'd like to have another really proven guy. And like I said, Wes Clark, we all know what he does with a stick. I mean, that, that's, there's no secret there. I'm not worried about that. What I'm more concerned with is the, the defensive side of things. Because, hey, with all due respect to him, had him on the show, loved the kid. But who can forget when Chris Cullen was the Gamecock starting catcher for all of one game? Because you played Liberty. I think it was Liberty on that Friday night. And, I mean, he single was an automatic double. I mean, he was ran on all night long. And, again, it's all due respect to Chris because, again, we had Chris on the show, and Chris is awesome. But I'm sure he'd tell you, too. There were some issues there. And especially when you're playing in the SEC, you'd need that guy behind the dish who can be a weapon, you know, keep guys at bay. Because if not, they'll just run on you all day long. And, and it's, it's very hard to win a baseball game when, again, a, a single's an automatic double. And if you don't know what I'm saying by that, it means that your catcher can't throw anybody out. So if, you got, if a guy hits a single, he gets on first, well, they're going to give him the steal because, you know, your catcher's not good enough to throw him out no, either way. So, Colin Burgess staying healthy. I think he can be that guy. He's going to need to catch 50 games for you, though. I mean, he's going to have to catch 45 to 50 games. 
and probably Wes Clark, I would say, you're probably going to want him to catch those midweek games and maybe some Sundays, but I don't know. So, again, that's the one thing that concerns me about the catchers. But I love Colin Burgess's game. Overall grade with the catchers, I'm going to give him a B-. minus. And like I said, I love Burgess's game. It's the depth. It's the depth and how fragile, I would say, this position is. The fragility of this position concerns me just a touch because, again, if something goes on with Colin Burgess, and, you know, being a catcher, I mean, it's, a, it's not like it's, you know, a good chance you get nicked up. I mean, you know, you're, you're in the line of fire every pitch. So <clears throat> the depth concerns me, but I like the game of Colin Burgess a lot. I think he provides you a really tough out in the line of a really, really underrated stick. And again, defensively, I think it speaks for itself. I think Gamecock fans will see that behind the plate. Got a good arm. Very, very good in blocking situations. Again, pitchers love throwing to him. B minus for the Gamecocks catchers. B minus for the South Carolina catchers going into the 2021 baseball season. With that being said, that wraps it up for the catchers and pretty much wraps up the show. Got a quick note really quickly. Uh, Shane Beamer did announce his five new analysts. Um, in case you guys were interested. Five new analysts being announced by Shane Beamer. Let me pull up their names. Shaq Wilson, of course, former Gamecocks linebacker, one of them. Nick Coleman, Ahmad Smith, Lonnie Teasley, and Stanton Weber. Again, the name that we all recognize is Shaq Wilson. The rest of those guys, welcome home. Don't really know who they are, but, but welcome home. But again, just filling out the football staff. And also, big day today for football as Shane Beamer is going to introduce Montario Hardesty, to the media at 3.30, I believe, is that presser. So, really, really good stuff. So, again, guys, going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, really exciting week. Really exciting next two weeks, especially with opening day upcoming. And, of course, Gamecocks basketball going, like I told you guys, this is arguably my favorite time of year because we have basketball, we have baseball, and they both overlap. And, again, it's content bleeding out the eyeballs, guys, and we love it. We love it. So, again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Go Cox, beat Alabama. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks so much. is your bank for a cash bonus. You could get $250 when you open checking and savings accounts by February 16th and meet the requirements. Get your $250 cash bonus. Go to any branch or visit bbvausa.com slash 250. That's bbvausa.com slash 250. BBVA, creating opportunities. All accounts subject to approval. $1,000 savings balance and $500 direct deposit required by April 30th.